Hello out there everyone, it's Mike McLean from Section 8 Bible, the number one book ever written for Section 8 Landlords. Hey everybody, how you doing? I know it's been about 12 or 13 months since my last video. I apologize, but honestly God, I haven't had a chance to scratch my ass in 13 months here. So it's finally starting to slow down a little bit and I want to start posting. My goal is to post or hang two, maybe three videos a month on here. So we're going to see how that works out, okay? Anyway, I hope you guys have been making some nice investments. I hope you've been putting some Section 8 properties in your portfolio. And I hope you've missed me. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let me jump right into a tip tonight. I'm going to talk about that one thing that everybody that's a landlord that's in this business hates, and that is getting sued. I'm going to tell you tonight how to prevent getting sued. There is a way, and I'm going to share it with you right now. All right. First, let me tell you what happens, okay? Some bum will fall down outside of your property and say they either twisted their back or twisted their ankle. Then they'll get a hold of a lawyer. For some reason or some way or another, that lawyer will find a way to get my phone number. So I'll be sitting at the shop and my phone will ring and, hey, uh, I got a client that fell outside of your property and we need your deck page, okay? The deck page is your insurance page. It has all your coverages. It says how much you have in fire policy, how much you have in uh, liability insurance. All your coverages are on there, but guess what? That lawyer doesn't want to see anything on there except for your liability coverage. Everything else he doesn't even give a shit about, okay? Once he sees you have liability insurance, that's good enough. He gets in touch with his, his client and he sends him to a chiropractor or wherever the hell he sends him. And next thing you know, they contact my insurance company and they got a lawsuit going, all right? That's how it works on the lawyer's end and the slip and fall guy's end, all right? Now let me tell you how it works for the insurance company, all right? They'll get a call from that lawyer. Uh, within a year, they'll usually settle with that client for five or $6,000. It's never anything big because they really don't get hurt. There's really not a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff they can claim, whether it's a twisted ankle. It's all bogus anyway. The insurance company knows it. The lawyer knows it. But here's what happens. They'll settle with the guy you know, for $6,000, then the insurance company will raise my rates $20, say $20 a property. Now, it doesn't sound, that doesn't sound like a lot, but I have 300 properties. If you're going to raise it $20 on each property, now that just cost me $6,000. So in reality, the insurance company didn't pay the guy. I paid the guy. If he's raising my rates and my rates are going up 6000 and they're giving to him, the only one that's getting hurt is me. You know what I mean? So why don't they just pick up the phone and say, hey, Mike, we got a guy that fell down. They do it in the first week. Call me up and say, hey, we got a guy that fell down. You want to give him $6,000 rather than sitting here and blowing smoke up everyone's ass and acting like they're working with the guy and trying to get him low ball. But that's that's not what's happening. They're just settling with him, with him out of court no matter what. So this is the stroll that broke the camel's back, all right? I had a blind guy living in one of my properties. He's coming down the steps and trips over somebody's shoes. Somebody left their shoes on the staircase. The blind guy steps on the shoes, falls down, says he hurts his wrist, okay? The insurance company actually settles with this guy out of court for $5,500. So that really blew my mind. I called the insurance company. I said, hey, well, what's going on here? How can you give this guy $5,500? He's blind. He fell down the steps. I didn't put the shoes on the, ste on the steps. I don't live there. How the hell are you giving him $5,500 for falling down the steps and have her, had a railing on it and everything else? Well, the guy finally just outright told me, uh, these are nuisance claims, so we try and get rid of them. I said, oh, really? So hooray for you and the hell with me. I said, if you guys would have went into that courtroom and tried to fight the battle, there's a good chance I would have won that one against a blind guy falling down steps. Uh, there's a chance I could have won and we wouldn't have had to pay the guy anything and I would, my rates wouldn't increase. Uh, am I correct? Yeah, but we just look to get rid of these claims. Oh, okay. So this, in other words, I thought, well, this is going to be going on for the eternity. As long as I own properties, I'm going to be getting $20 spikes in my in my rates every time somebody feels like falling down on one of my properties. So anyone that read my books out there knows how much I hate to lose money. Okay. So I knew I had to come up with a system or a plan to back these lawyers off right in the beginning stages of it. Okay. So I noticed that every time the lawyers called me, that's the first thing they wanted to see. Faxes over your deck page. Faxes over your deck page. I said, okay. And on the deck page, it would say right there, you know, I had a million dollars worth of coverage. The property's covered for 100000 in fire, 
a um, uh, million dollars worth of liability. Right then, when they seen how much liability coverage I had, you know, they would send the guy, their client, like I said, oh, they, they'd send him off to a chiropractor, get him treated, and know they're going to be settling and making money, okay? So I thought long and hard about it. I said, wait a minute, here's what I'm going to do. So I took all 300 of my properties and I put them all on just fire policies. I got fire policies, fire policies only on all 300 of the properties, okay? I took zero liability. So when I look at that deck page, it says amount of fire coverage, $100,000. Amount of liability, zero. In that box is a big fat zero, okay? So now, when an attorney would call and say, we need your deck page, I'd say, okay, here it is. I'd fax it right over and they'd see zero liability coverage. They'd see the $100,000 for the fire, but they knew they had nothing to go after. So of course they would come with false threats and false promises. Hey, we're gonna sue you, we're gonna come after you. I'd always say, hey, you'll hold your hand on your ass waiting to get money from me because I'm never gonna sell the property. You'll wait till I'm dead. It'll be 35 years from now. That's how long you'll wait, okay? So every time, I'm batting a thousand with that system now. Every time somebody calls up and says somebody fell down on your property or a tenant got hit in the head with a ceiling tile or whatever this, whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm more than happy to send that policy over and show them that I don't have it. And they're not going to come after you because they don't, you know, like I said, they, you know, they, they, it's like trying to get blood from a stone. They're not going to do it. They're not going to waste their time. They're not going to waste their effort. They're not going to send this guy to a doctor that they know and the doctor doesn't get paid. Next thing you know, the lawyer and the doctor are arguing with each other because the lawyer sent them to the doctor knowing there was no liability, liability coverage. But I'm not stupid enough not to carry liability. They may think I'm stupid enough, and that's what I want them to think, but what I did for the liability, I went out and took an umbrella, an umbrella, yeah, umbrella, see, an umbrella policy, and it stuck all 300 of the properties into that umbrella, and it gives me a million dollars worth of coverage should somebody fall on any one of the properties that I own, I'm covered for up to a million dollars worth of insurance. So let's just say somebody God forbid, does break their neck out front of your, one of your properties, and you tell them, "Hey, I don't have insurance." Uh, you know, the lawyer takes it over and files it in the courthouse, and then you say, "Oh, wait, I do have a liability uh, uh, umbrella policy here." So, you know, you, you want to back yourself. I'm not telling you not to carry it. I'm just telling you to separate the policy. So, whenever an attorney approaches you, you can just send that policy over. And they'll see that zero, and I guarantee it, they'll back off. I am batting a thousand using this system so far. So, anyway, that is my tip for the day. I hope that helps you out, especially like I said, if you own a lot of properties, it'll work out well for you. So, and here's one more thing doing it this way as opposed to the way I was doing it, it saved me, believe it or not, $11,000. It's $11,000 cheaper a year to do it the way I'm doing it now. Plus, it saves me the headache of getting sued. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that tip. I will try and get back on here as soon as possible. I'm going to try and get you out another tip next week since I uh, made you wait 13 months. Now I'll start hitting uh, as quick as I can. I'll try and get you another tip by uh, the end of next week. All right, uh, enjoy the Super Bowl, and I will talk to you next week. See ya.